BeyondApartheid2.n. Commission pushes legal and propaganda offensive against Israel. A just published United Nations report that claims to find Israel guilty of the crime of apartheid, comma, is only one element of a broader legal and propaganda offensive being pushed by an obscure UN regional commission to stigmatize America's close ally and build support for the Palestinian cause, according to documents examined by Daily News. The offensive has been gestating for at least two years within the U.N.S. Economic and Social Commission for West Asia, ESQA whose entire membership are Arab states, and is time to this year's 50th anniversary of the 1967 war between Arab states and Israel, which resulted in Israel's control of the occupied territories of the West Bank and Gaza. At least one additional report commissioned by Esqua, attempting to create an innovative and scientific methodology for estimated the cost of Israel's 50-year control of the territories, is still in the works with the aim of demanding billions in reparations for Palestinians. A third aspect of the strategy is an elaborate proposed propaganda campaign against the Israeli occupation, making use of UN institutions and a variety of diplomatic and media channels, to create a new, sympathetic brand for Palestinians as victims that would cause a snowball effect thus altering public opinion globally in record time comma as an Esquad background paper puts it. All three elements, including the now notorious apartheid report, were given a thorough airing at the biennial high-level meeting of Esquad's 18 members, one of them being the State of Palestine, held in Doha from December 13 to 15, 2016. Esquad is ostensibly a forum for regional economic coordination and development. The meeting was touted largely as an occasion to examine the U.N.S. ponderous sustainable development goals. Nonetheless, a preliminary version of the apartheid report, containing much of its final wording, was one of the documents circulated at the session, and a resolution passed at the end of the meeting called on Esquad's Secretariat to publicize the explosive apartheid study as much as possible. The resolution also called for an Esquad media and communications strategy aimed at increasing global awareness of, among other things. Israeli violations of Palestinian rights and international law and orders the bureaucracy to increase activities on Palestine and organize special activities to mark the 1967 anniversary. The apartheid report caused an eruption of outrage from U.S. Ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley when it was officially published under UN auspices on March 15. She noted it came from a body whose membership nearly universally does not recognize Israel, and demanded the UN officially withdraw the report from circulation. Haley heaped additional scorn on the co-author of the 306-page document, Richard Falk, a notoriously anti-Israel academic who often provoked U.S. irritation for his anti-Semitic statements and anti-U.S. diatribes during a six-year term as UN special rapporteur on the rights of the Palestinian people. All has, among other things, cast doubt on the official version of the 9-11 attacks as the work of Islamic terrorists and after the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings remarked that the American Global Domination Project is bound to generate all kinds of resistance in the post-colonial world. In her counter-blast against the Esquad-sponsored report, U.S. Ambassador Haley called him a man who has repeatedly made biased and deeply offensive comments about Israel and espoused ridiculous conspiracy theories. Falk stepped down from his U.N. job in May 2014, but has kept up his anti-Israel agitation as a professor at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and has made frequent references to the Israel apartheid theme. For his part. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres distanced himself from the document, and an official close to him asserted he was blindsided by its appearance. A UN official pointed the finger of blame for the publication at his Qua's Executive Secretary, Rima McAuliffe, a Jordanian and longtime UN bureaucrat who was appointed to her job by former UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon in 2010. Caliph was slated to step down within weeks as part of Dura's initial management shuffle, but instead abruptly resigned on March 17 after Dura's asked that the report be removed from Estua's website. At a Beirut press conference, 
an unrepentant caliph reportedly hailed the report as the first of its kind from a UN agency to condemn Israel, and added, it was expected that Israel and its allies would put enormous pressure on the United Nations Secretary General to renounce the report. The UN official observed that Caliph was in New York recently and did not mention the apartheid report to anyone. One of the responsibilities of UN Economic Commissioner's Committee, the official noted, is to move information up the chain of command to avoid such problems. That may well be so. But an official summary of the Doha session is also available on the ASQUA website, accessible to all. Among other things, it notes the elements of the ASQUA 50th anniversary actions, issuing broadside condemnations of Israel's actions in the territories without reference to acts of terrorism or other assaults on Israelis, and calling for creation of a specialized unit on issues related to Palestine and its people, including further monitoring of Israeli violations of the Palestinian people's rights and of international law.